Singapore's unwavering commitment to international law stands as a cornerstone of our foreign policy. We have consistently advocated for their adherence to establish international legal norms and principles, and we are not hesitant to speak forthrightly even to our own close allies when we believe that they have transgressed these said principles. While this conflict may be geographically far away from us, with the ubiquity of social media, regional conflicts no longer remain confined to their immediate surrounds. They possess the potential to reverberate and touch us here, even in Singapore, while we observe the unfolding tragedy from what seems like a safe distance. Let us not kid ourselves. All it takes is a cursory search, and you will see that since the 7th of October, online traffic and misinformation targeting Singapore and our local population has been on an exponential rise. Mr. Speaker, we are at risk. We must redouble our efforts to ensure that Singaporeans have access to reliable sources of information and are equipped to discern fact from fiction. By doing so, we empower Singaporeans to make informed decisions and engage in constructive dialogues even in the face of contentious global issues. This is a complex conflict with a complex history. While we do not have a simple, quick fix solution to it, we can play our part by not complicating it even further. Here in Singapore, we need to make sure that we are always in the light of day, standing by our principles and regarding fellow Singaporeans, regardless of our views as fellow Singaporeans. Singapore is a small country far away from the conflict. Yet when this conflict emerged, many in Singapore felt moved by it. I received many emails from residents, quite a number expressing sympathy for Hamas. Others I have spoken with said we should speak up more strongly for Israel's right of self-defense and should not be going soft on terrorist attacks. In order to maintain this peace, we need to find common ground and tolerance. We need to look for things that bring us together rather than differences that divide us. I think many of us share an understanding that both the Palestinians and Jewish people have a right to peaceful existence and a nation of their own. Let us come together in solidarity to support the cause for peace and security in the Middle East. I support the Singapore government's action on 28 October to vote in favour of the UN General Assembly resolution calling for, among other things, a humanitarian truce and aid access to the besieged Gaza Strip. Now, Singapore could have just remained apathetic like the 45 other countries in the world who abstained in vote. But we stood up and put forward our position, voting on principles of humanity and international law. This is a long-standing issue with deep historical roots. The world needs to do more globally to stop this cycle of violence and protect the children, whether they are Arabs or Jews, Israelis or Palestinians. The one thing that this tragedy proves to us is this. The Palestinian people's aspiration, pain and suffering cannot be ignored. If we want long-standing peace and stability for both Israelis and Palestinians to live side by side and prosper together, long-standing peace cannot be achieved through a cycle of violence. It is broken through the intervention of love humanity and compassion. Quoting from Martin Luther King, returning hate for hate multiplies hate, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that.